I've made games in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and then I made a game because I felt like a poser. And now we're making a game in Photoshop to fulfill the prophecy. So Adobe essentially lets you run scripts just to automate tasks. So that's all we have to work with. Okay, sweet. We got a pop-up, which tells my tiny monkey brain that this is probably possible. I've been trying to get keyboard input working, but I guess Adobe has restrictions on that. Lizard, 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 lizard. We can try a digital keyboard or arrow keys. Let's see if that works. We should be able to test the movement with just this arrow. Shit, I forgot to draw something. Okay. One fourth quit later and we can draw our little guy and we'll give him a little smile. He doesn't look very happy. Okay, a bigger smile. Now he just looks like he was drawn by. Hey look, he moves in the wrong direction. Make him away downtown. So I'm trying to get something resembling an update loop working. Okay, so it won't let me execute any kind of functions while the app's refreshing. So we're gonna have to get creative. Can I just exit the loop when I wanna call function? Nope, no I cannot. All right, no update loop. I'm just gonna have to update after each player action. I think the best way to go about this would be to make a platformer with static obstacles so things only have to update when the player moves. All right, look at that. He can jump now. He doesn't fall though. I didn't even think about that. We're gonna have to have some kind of loop to have him fall properly. He's fallen. These are some clunky ass controls though. Let's finish the rest of the controller and then we can figure out how to fix falling after that. All the forums I'm reading are saying the only way to get things to move smoother is to use bridge talk. So I'm moving to bridge talk. Ah, yes. Perfect. Classic. Are you serious? All right. You know what? No, we're going to make a puzzle game on a grid now. And that means you have to die. I'm just gonna use the built-in Photoshop grid for the time being until I make some art assets. And I wanna make it so that you can like push boxes around, maybe like a key for a lock or something. And if this is all done right, this should pop up with, yeah, sweet. Okay, so we can at least detect collisions. I can work with that. So I got collisions working in all directions, but the code base is just like pure spaghetti code at this point because it won't let me access stored variables for some reason. Please don't do a code review on this video. Okay. Yeah, and there we go. So now we can get this to move around. I feel a whole lot better about this now. All right, we got to draw our new little guy now. And he's kind of looks like a spider, but he's beautiful to me. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. All right, time for epic art montage to make this feel like a real game. Deja vu. Can you tell that I took one game art class in college? Key time, time for keys. Let it go. Okay, now push the key to the lock. Then it unlocks. I'm gonna make the lock disappear when you unlock it, but this is like barely a game, but it's, it's a proof of concept. All right, we'll make a door that's locked, which you can unlock and then leave through to win the game. I'll just have the door sprites stacked on top of each other. Just hide the top one when you unlock it. Yeah, this works great, simple. And we can't forget to dress up our little spider friend. This is just some rough clothes, but they'll, they'll work. All right, I'm gonna give it the final touches quick, then we'll play through it. Well, here it is, the first game ever created in Photoshop, I think. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. I plan to upload more often now that I've got my game finished, and the Discord is in the description below if you'd like to join that. And I will see you guys in the next video.